Salutations, crustaceans. I'm Lobster, and it's that time again. We have another head to head. Let's meet the contenders. Turn around every now and then I get a little bit lonely that you're never coming round. Turn around every now and then I get a little bit tired of listening to the sound of my teeth. Turn around every now and then I get a little bit nervous that the best of all the years have gone by. Turn around every now and then I get a little bit terrified and then I see the look your eyes. Turn around, bright eyes. Every now and then I fall apart. Turn around, bright eyes. Every now and then I fall apart. And I need you now tonight. And I need you more than ever. If you only hold me tight, we'll be holding on. Once upon a time I was falling in love. Now I'm only falling apart There's nothing I can do A total eclipse of the heart To my left, we have the ESP LTD BB1005 Bunny Brunel Signature Model. This four-claw base features a neck-through construction, Aguilar Electronics, an ebony fretboard, and a gorgeous quilted maple top. And to my right, we have the Lakeland Skyline 5502. Also rated four claws out of five, the Lakeland 5502 features Lakeland Active Electronics, a sparkling ice blue metallic paint job, as well as some classic block inlays on this gorgeous maple fretboard. This is gonna be a close one. Well, let's get started. But first, you know what you gotta do. Go ahead and pinch that like button so my hand can turn back to normal. Thanks. So we're going to be putting these two instruments to head in five different categories. Construction and feel, tone, features and versatility, looks, and value. Let's take a look at the construction of these two bases first. So the Lakeland Skyline 5502 features a 35-inch scale bolt-on maple neck with 22 frets. It also features a beautifully painted ash body. Now both of these bases feature string-through construction, but the Lakeland is the only one that gives you the option of mounting the strings traditionally. The truss rod is easily accessible at the body, and the 3 and 2 design of the headstock allows the base to be uh, pretty well balanced in your lap. I know that with a good strap, this shouldn't have any neck dive. The fit and finish of the hardware is really good, and the paint job is really nice as well. Overall, I'm very satisfied with the construction of this base. Now let's take a look at the ESP. The ESP LTD Bunny Brunel Signature Model features a maple neck through construction, alder body, and a 24 fret, 34 inch scale ebony fretboard. Now don't think just because this is 34 inch scale that it has a weak B string, because it definitely doesn't. The slanted headstock gives this bass excellent string tension, and that makes for a really nice B string. You'll see more in the sound comparison. Now one area where the Lakeland has this beat is headstock ergonomic. This five in line headstock makes for inferior weight distribution when compared to the Lakeland, and that leads to a little bit more neck dive, though it's not very drastic. To combat this, you have this giant upper horn that goes past the 12th fret. This makes for some really solid balance when you're wearing a strap. Now both of these bases have excellent access to the upper register of the fretboard, but the Bunny Brunel wins out there with this huge cutout to give you as much access as you need to that 24th fret. Now one thing I really have to knock ESP for is the battery door situation. Where the Lakeland has an easy to open battery compartment with a little plastic tab to open the lid, ESP, however, just has a little plastic panel that you have to unscrew, and it's really hard to get it out because it's fit very snug. Every time I've put it in, I've struggled like hell to get it out of there, so I've just left it out. The ESP's truss rod access is also hidden by a cover over at the headstock, which is kind of a pain to get out. You have to remove the cover and loosen your D-string in order to access the truss rod compartment. I'm going to give the Lakeland the win in the construction and feel category. Though these are both excellently constructed bases, I feel like the Lakeland is geared towards a better ownership experience overall. So that's one nothing for the Lakeland. Let's check out the tone category. Now both of these bases feature a Stingray pickup at the bridge 
and a jazz pickup at the neck. First, we're going to compare these basses to each other with all the controls centered. Next, we're going to look at the Stingray pickup at the bridge and compare that to the tone of a Stingray. And then lastly, we're going to take a look at the neck pickups on both of these basses and compare them to our Mexican precision bass. <laughs> Man, both of these basses sound great. This is going to be a really tough choice. Now let's take a look at the bridge pickup of both. that the Lakeland sounds a bit more like a Stingray with the bridge pickup. The ESP has more of that honky, jazz bassy bridge pickup sound, whereas the Lakeland and the Stingray both don't. <laughs> Next, let's compare the neck pickup to our Mexican precision bass. <laughs> had the superior bridge pickup, I'm going to give the neck pickup to the ESP. I think it sounds a lot better and a lot more clear, whereas this one sounds a bit muddy. The winner of the sound category is the ESP. Though both basses sound great and the Lakeland has a really nice fat tone, I feel like the ESP has a lot more clarity in its sound, and the preamp has a much more drastic impact than it does on the Lakeland. The score is now one to one. Let's take a look at features and versatility. This category might be too close to call. Both of these basses are absolutely feature packed. Both feature hip shot hardware all around, active three band preamps, as well as a really nice set of pickups. However, the ESP does have a detuner, two extra frets, and superior fret access. The ESP's preamp also has a dedicated mid frequency selector where you can go between 400 and 800 Hertz. Whereas the Lakeland doesn't have a mid frequency selector. The Lakeland, on the other hand, has a coil tap. Still, in terms of versatility, I'm going to give it to the ESP. This is a really close category. It might be too close to Gaul, but I think the ESP just inches out. The included detuner, as well as this combination of Aguilar pickups and preamp, gives you a lot of great tonal varieties. The Lakeland sounds great, and it's very good at sounding like a Lakeland but it has a hard time stepping outside of that bubble where I find the ESP to be a bit more versatile. So right now it's two to one for the ESP. Now let's talk looks. I think these are both great looking bases. This ESP features a gorgeous quilted maple top and a nice contrasting ebony fretboard where the Lakeland has a beautiful sparkling ice metallic finish and gorgeous block inlays. However, I think the Lakeland is gonna be more pleasing to the eye for most people. 
The ESP's design is referencing the original Carvin Bunny Brunel signature, and that was kind of a love it or hate it shape. Many people love it, but it was definitely polarizing. The Lakeland, on the other hand, is a bit more vanilla, but there's nothing wrong with vanilla, and it does vanilla very well. I feel like the Lakeland has superior design cohesion as well. The headstock shape, the body shape, everything about it just works well together. Whereas with the ESP, I feel like they took a carbon shape, threw on an ESP headstock, and called it a day. So for the looks, we're going to give it to the Lakeland. We're all tied up at 2 to 2. Let's talk value. Both of these bases have a very similar MSRP of around $1,500 or $1,600. However, on the used market, the ESPs can be had for as little as $800, whereas the Lakelands usually demand a bit of a premium, sitting around $1,000. Also, on the new market, the ESPs seem to be selling for closer to $1,300 rather than their MSRP of $1,600. The more popular Lakelands, on the other hand, are still sitting up at $1,600 new. So it's a tough choice, but on the value front, I'm going to give it to the ESP. I feel like the really solid construction, great tonal variety, and cheaper street price make this just edge out as the winner. Both of these bases are really great, and Lakeland fans are still going to like Lakelands, and the ESP fans are still going to like ESPs. That makes the ESP LTD BB1005 Bunny Brunel Signature Model the winner of this head-to-head. -head. Yay! Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. Leave a comment below and let me know what you think about this head-to-head. -head. Keep in mind, this is just my opinion, and I think that both of these are very, very great bases, and you'll do great choosing either one. So go ahead and leave a comment below and let me know which one you'd pick. And if you're not subscribed already, be sure to hit the subscribe button below so you'll get all my latest videos. Until we groove again.